Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today played 14 seasons in the NBA, winning a championship with the Boston Celtics in 2008. Throughout his career, he was always known for being one of the best teammates and also the toughest. Kendrick Perkins, it's so good to see you. Say thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I have not feel like I haven't seen you since Boston. For like 10 years. Yes, I too, think, too long. I think I saw you a couple times when you would play the Lakers or the Clippers right. like yeah. in town. And I don't know if I've ever told you this, but the saddest day, like in the, the years that I've been covering basketball, for me, was when I was working for the Celtics, trade deadline, I'm home at lunch thinking, <laughs> no Celtics are gonna be traded, we're totally in the clear, and at the very last hour, the news came down that you were traded to Oklahoma City. I did not know that. I literally, like, I was so sad for Dang. days. I was sad too. I, I, that was what I was gonna say. I know you I were was, sad too. I was hurt, I was hurt, just the whole Celtic family, but I didn't know that. I didn't know you was. Really? Uh-uh. Um, aside from me, because I wasn't really a teammate, but which of your teammates would you say took that day the worst? I would have to say, um, I would have to say KG. Uh, I, I, that was my first time ever seeing him cry. And we cried like babies and it was crazy. And uh, it was very emotional. Um, so I think, yeah, it, it was KG. Cause I, I went to his room, knocked on his room door and told him I got traded and he just broke down. I broke down with him. So yeah, that was a tough moment. I heard real about, tough moment. I heard about yeah, that. It was a real tough Like, I don't know if any, I'm sure people have told you, but back in the front office, <laughs> like everyone was devastated. And then we started, cause you guys were on the road, I think. Right, we were. And so, people started kind of filtering in the stories that you and KG were like locked in a room crying. Yeah, we were. So, it, was, it was hard. Yeah. And I had to tell them like, all right, cool, but you know, this not gonna change our brotherhood. So we always gonna be family. But it was still, you know, heartbreaking. It was. Yeah. And you know, like a lot of guys, they wanna know, okay, who was I traded for? Like, is my value really high? And you were traded for Jeff Green. Right. From OKC to come to the Celtics. I'm gonna tell you right now, I did not wanna like him at all because right. he was traded because of you. <laughs> I wound up, he, he was great and he was, he was really cool and I did like him. Um, but then you guys wind up playing together with the Cavs. Right. Did you guys talk about that trade when you were we, back together? We did, we did mention it. And it's crazy because it was the same similar situation. Jeff had turned down a contract extension with OKC. Yeah. And to be honest, just just as much as the Celtic fan and organization I've out, and I was hurt to leave Boston, it was the same way on how they felt about Jeff. So when I first got to the Thunder organization, everybody kind of was looking at me like, <laughs> we love Jeff around here, yeah. like type thing. So I had to gradually, you know, build everybody like to liking me and stuff like that, which it didn't take long, but it was kind of like weird because we both kind of was in the same situation. Yeah. Is it true that you used to show up to practice in those early days wearing Celtics warm ups still? I did. I did. <laughs> that probably didn't I help did. your cause. I did. It didn't help at all. And they was like, hey, Perk, look, you in OKC, we'll get you all the gear we need. And it was like, we need, we, we, like, you know, just. <laughs> And then they started giving me a hard time, but I actually gelled with those guys pretty quickly. Yeah. Because they, cause they had this winning mentality. They were so young, but it was just like, you could tell they had a passion for winning. So it was like, and they looked up to me. So like, I instantly took a leadership role where pregame speeches, I was doing the speeches and, and after I seen they was listening and following my lead, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So this is how KG feels. So I'm the That's big brother. That's awesome. That doesn't surprise me at all. Ooh. Total side story, which is like a little weird, but my dad, so my dad and I were from Chicago, so I right. would watch Michael Jordan playing. We were big Bulls fans. But when I started working for the Celtics, he loved the Celtics. His favorite number was 43. You wore 43. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you know this, but the Celtics used to like give us your guys old warm ups. Really? <laughs> so yes. uh -uh, I didn't so know that. my dad has a collection of Kendrick Perkins warm ups with 43 on it. What's your dad name? And he wears them all the time. His name is Sean. That's what I'm talking about, Sean. <laughs> yeah, he got to yes, represent. He does. And so he became a Kendrick Perkins fan, even though he's I a love Bulls it. fan. I and love it. Yeah, so he wears your stuff. So you and Kevin Garnett, obviously very, very close now. Right. But I heard that when you were going to join the Celtics, you guys had some history. We did. Okay, would you care to elaborate? Okay, so 
KG and I used to have heated battles. I'm talking about to the point where it was like, hey, you know what, man, if I see hey, if I see you outside this, it's on on site type stuff, right? Oh, it was yeah. going off the court too. Yeah, it was bad. Okay. It was bad. It was real bad. Like we had beef and why? It was just the competitive. Okay. It's like on the court, it started on the court and just the noise talking, it just kept going. And then all of a sudden he so they make the trade, they get KG, and KG was like, he goes up to Paul. Paul tell me this. He like, hey, man, look, what's up with your boy Perk, man? Because I ain't trying to come here and we having no problem. So P was like, <laughs> nah, man, you go love Perk, man. You go love Perk. So for the first, like when we first met, I remember I walked into the locker room before we got ready to go to Rome for training camp. And I was like, hey, what's up, KG? And he was like, hey, what's going on? And it was kind of dry, yeah. right? So we kind of kept it moving. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get on the plane, we get to playing cards, we get to interacting on this seven hour flight going overseas for training camp. And we, we getting a little vibe, but it, you could tell it's still kind of like, he still kind of like, I'm, I'm trying to be real cool with him because he don't know at the end of the day, I grew up watching KG. Like, I had a pair of Garnets when he was with yeah. Jumpman. Like, you know what I mean? So we get to Rome, and I just remember the first day of practice, we had practice. The first day of practice, we killed we killed the second unit. And, you know, we out there, we talking noise. And then after that, it was like, boom. He oh. was like, I'm rocking with Perk all day. And it was just kind of like, I was like, dang, this is real. He never knew that I really looked up to him like that because my pride was in the way, so I wasn't going to show it. <laughs> but it was cool, though. And ever since then, we've just been like big brother, little brother. Yes, yeah, so that trip to Rome was everything for you guys. It was. It was. It, and I mean, it, it was because it was three weeks, but it was almost like we was forced to hang with one another. So it was like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, that's what helped us so much because we was able to build that chemistry and camaraderie off the court. KG is kind of like you too, where I think a lot of people who don't know him think he's just this really, and until he actually went on TNT, by the way. Right. But they thought that he was this scary, intense, all the time guy. Right. And like you, there's a really nice, cool side to him as well. He's Yes, he's the best individual like yeah. outside of basketball. Like, it's like a light switch for him, though. Like, he just go from, like, this dancing, talking your head off type guy, like, full of positive energy, and then all of a sudden it's game day, and it's like, hey, man, stop f***ing around. I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, instantly, like, yeah. instantly turn, yeah. go crazy. Is it true he's one of the most generous players? Yes. Yeah? By far. He's the most unselfish guy I've ever been around for us basketball-wise. Like... You think about it, like, all the guys that was working, like, intern, that was with the Celtics, the video guys, you know, the assistants, mm -hmm. the, like, ball boys and stuff JJ. like that. JJ. Right. So, the like, the start of the training camp, he will get each one of them five custom, he would have his tailor come in, he will buy each one of them five custom suits, right? Wow. Yeah, and on top of that, like, he had his diva ways, right? Like, we will go on the road and we had to, literally, you know, we will have to wait on the plane for him because he'll get his hour massage. But at the end of the day, he'll cater Root Chris Steakhouse for the whole plane. <laughs> so Not just for the for players, it. for the whole plane. <laughs> and, like, the biggest thing is, like, to me is when he bought everybody in the organization that did all the little things. He bought them all Rolex watches. Like, mm -hmm. that was, like, over the top. Yeah. But like literally he'll get a shirt off your back. He he is and I tell him that too, too I tell him that all the time. Sometimes it's okay to be selfish a little bit cuz he always put himself last. Except for when it came to eating. Didn't he oh, have a right. player's first He role? did. He and he stood by that what and, and Dr. McKean. Still. He still right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Dr. McKean what? Dr. McKean actually was his first victim. Well, he was? Yeah, well, you know, Dr. McKinn was, he was a great doctor, but he was kind of like... Smooth. Yeah, yeah smooth, but kind of had that Hollywood stuff. That's like, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, like, yes. hey, Perk, look, I rank, I rank top 100 in the nation <laughs> at doctors. I'm yes. like, oh, okay, congratulations, Dr. McKinn. Like, <laughs> really? And so, like, 
He didn't know the rule, right? So, like, we come in at a home game, and I just remember, like, the food was laid out from, uh, what's the Italian, Maggiano's or Oh, yeah, or you guys always had Maggiano's. Right, so he comes in, and KG's in the shower. I'm sitting in my locker, icing my knees, so I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh, Lord. So Dr. McKinney's just, like, getting him a plate of pasta, putting it together. So KG comes out, he's in this towel, a towel wrapped around him, and he all shiny because he used to drench himself in baby oil, right? So he all shiny, and he comes out, he stops at the door, and next thing you know, he got this look, right? So I'm like, uh. <laughs> but I'm over here, I'm like, yeah, it's about to go down. <laughs> so he, he goes, stands over him with that seven foot frame, look down, was like, hey, what you doing? So it's like, what do you mean, kid? He's, man, you know, you know the rules around here. Players eat first. Matter of fact, give me this plate. Go back in there with the training office. <gasps> tossed it in the trash, right? Like, tossed it in the trash. Oh. It was it was a little bit disrespectful, but it was funny, <laughs> awkward. though. Awkward. It was awkward, but it was funny because it happened to Dr. McKean. Mm -hmm. Dr. McKean needed, sometimes you, a person need humbleness, yeah. and, and he needed that yeah. at that point. I hear you right. on that one. I remember Dr. <laughs> yeah. McKean. Yeah, so he needed that.